It isn't often that a speech from a politician goes viral. I mean, usually it's a video of a daredevil bulldog cruising down the street on a skateboard. Or it's some amazing trick basketball shot that may or may not be the result of some sort of fancy editing. Yeah. Bang. Or a 32-year-old guy who somehow manages to interview the 12-year-old version of himself. That, that's what usually is the stuff of viral videos. It isn't often that a speech from a politician becomes a viral thing. But that did happen last September with this. There is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Nobody. You built a factory out there, good for you. But I want to be clear, you moved your goods to market on the roads the rest of us paid for. Yep. You hired workers the rest of us paid to educate. You uh, were safe in your factory because of police forces and fire forces that the rest of us paid for. You didn't have to worry that marauding bands would come and seize everything at your factory and hire someone to protect against this because of the work the rest of us did. Now look, you built a factory and it turned into something terrific or a great idea. God bless, keep a big hunk of it. But part of the underlying social contract is you take a hunk of that and pay forward for the next kid who comes along. That clip from Democratic Senate candidate Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts lit up the internet machine last fall. It racked up about a million views on YouTube. It got passed around in email form in teeny, 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 tiny little lettering. It got posted on people's Facebook pages. It became so popular and so well known as a political message that, you know, the president of the United States um, eventually decided to help himself to it. He sort of stole it in a friendly way. Elizabeth Warren made those remarks in somebody's living room up in Andover, Massachusetts. But the basic kernel of what she said soon found its way into President Obama's stump speech. We're successful because somebody invested in our education, somebody built uh, schools, somebody created incredible universities. I went to school on scholarship. We benefited from somebody somewhere making an investment in us. And I don't care who you are, that's true of all of us. That has now become sort of a standard part of President Obama's stump speech, uh, including just the other day in Virginia. If you've been successful, you, don't, you didn't get there on your own. You, you didn't get there on your own. I, I'm always struck by people who think, well, it must be because I was just so smart. There are a lot of smart people out there. It must be because I worked harder than everybody else. Let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of hardworking people out there. If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you some help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we have that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The internet didn't get invented on its own. Government research created the internet, so then all the companies could make money off the internet. The point is, is that when we succeed, we succeed because of our individual initiative, but also because we do things together. We succeed because of individual initiative, but also because we do things together. Businesses cannot succeed unless we all chip in to pay for things like roads and bridges and police and firefighters that make it possible to do business. Uh, the beautiful thing here about this sentiment is that it turns out to be a really bipartisan thing in an era when nothing is bipartisan, right? I mean, Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney has also been out there pushing the same idea. Would the people who began a business or are leading a business in this room please stand up? Wow, thank you. Thank you. I know that you recognize a lot of people help you in a business, the, the, perhaps the banks, the investors. There's no question your mom and dad, your school teachers, uh, the, the people that provide roads, the fire, the police, a lot of people help. The roads, the fire, the police, the teachers, right, right. We're all in agreement. So Elizabeth Warren says it. President Obama kind of cribs it in a friendly way from Elizabeth Warren. Mitt Romney then cribs it from Barack Obama and Elizabeth Warren. They're all making the same point. But because it's Mitt Romney we're talking about, he is now also vehemently against that point that he has been making. The Romney campaign has now extracted from President Obama's speech that you just saw there, just the part where the president says, if you've got a business, you didn't build that, somebody else made that happen. 
Now, he's very clearly at that point in his speech talking about the American system that allows us all to thrive, the roads and the bridges and the infrastructure that all businesses count on, the things that we do as a country through government that allow business to take place. He's saying we don't do that alone. Your business, which you may very well do alone, benefits from this. But your business doesn't itself build the roads and the bridges that the trucks from your business drive across to then sell your widgets at a market. The roads and the bridges thing, that's something the government has to do. Mr. Obama was talking about the role of government in laying the groundwork so that businesses can then succeed. That's something that Barack Obama has talked about. It's something that Mitt Romney has talked about. It's something that Elizabeth Warren has talked about. They have all talked about it in almost exactly the same terms, positively. But Mr. Romney has now edited that idea, that idea that he has supported into being a nefarious communist attack on business or something. Let me tell you something. If you got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. My father's hands didn't build this company. My hands didn't build this company. My son's team's not building this company. Through hard work and a little bit of luck, we built this business. Why are you demonizing us for it? Did you build the road that goes to your business? That's what he actually was talking about. Misleading attack ad politics are among the most boring of all politics. <laughs> but there are, there are two interesting things going on here right now in this. The first interesting thing uh, is this. When the great Ezra Klein at the Washington Post wrote about this today, he tagged his post, elections don't have to be stupid. <laughs> Ezra is making the point that there is actually a substantive and somewhat quantitative debate to be had here about the optimum level of public investment that we should be making in the resources that we and all businesses share, things like roads and bridges, which businesses use in order to make money privately. That's an interesting conversation to have. That's a policy conversation. There's also an interesting conversation to be had about how much you can get away with and still be considered a viable candidate for president. Because what's in this ad was not what Barack Obama said. He did not say, somebody else built your business for you. You didn't build it. He said, we built the roads and the bridges that your business uses. You didn't have to build the roads and bridges yourself. But Mitt Romney's been doing this kind of thing the entire campaign. The Romney campaign's still running with the totally made up allegation that the Energy Department Inspector General concluded that President Obama steered government contracts to friends and family. That is an empirical statement that is checkable and is not true. It is false. And there it is in a Mitt Romney ad. It's been up for a long time. We've called them on it. Others have too. They are just letting it go. Mr. Romney's first ad against President Obama, the very first one, took the president's words completely out of context. And not only did Mr. Romney not take that ad down, but he bragged about it when he was called out for it. President Obama in that ad was quoting something he disagreed with from another politician. Mitt Romney ran it as if they were his own words. This is not typical political practice. There's a lot to debate here in terms of the substance, but there's also the question of what we expect of somebody who's running for president. There is a certain shamelessness threshold that we expect our candidates to meet. I mean, these ads should be corrected and taken down, but they are still up. And yeah, attack ads have spin and nuance and they're often contested, but brazenly, empirically false ads, one right after the other, that seems like something new. Does that sort of thing hurt you as a candidate in America? Are we so inured to the idea of everybody calling each other a liar that when somebody actually really does blatantly lie, it doesn't matter anymore? Ultimately, that is not a question about these guys fighting it out. That is a question about us.